so basically i grew up in the 80s and one of my most uh, uh, my source of a lot of uh, cinema films interesting uh, content was doordarshan so i remember watching a lot of these interesting films which captured my imagination be it gurudev be it uh, kamal amrohi uh, or uh, the uh, the new wave uh, indian cinema directors like satyajit ray ritwik ghatak adur gopalakrishnan jan barwa aparna sen who was making very interesting uh, interesting films in the 90s and uh, uh, a lot of these films and also some very interesting shows were there like discovery of india um so uh, um i realized that i was more drawn to this uh, this side of filmmaking this side of storytelling which is uh, not really uh, based in the popular culture of song and dance which is more about <clears throat> reflecting the socio political climate of the country <clears throat> and uh, i myself i found myself increasingly drawn to uh, uh, the cinema of uh, that kind so these were my early influences For example, I still vividly remember uh, that when I was watching a song of Pyasa uh, by Gurudev, I realized as a child there is something called a movement, because I I see Gurudev is standing against this library and uh, singing a song, and I suddenly noticed that this thing uh, is moving towards him, and it was a magical moment. I thought I discovered something. I realized that the camera is tracking in. It was it was something which I understood much later when I studied films. when i did my mass communication course when i went to ftii and uh, but i had started picking up the language i was looking for hints i was trying to decode on my own level also i was also uh, uh, really uh, influenced and uh, inspired by the uh, hindi literature apart from the english literature which uh, all read which is the classics and everything but uh, towards my uh, <clears throat> later uh, part of education like when i was in college that's when i discovered the hindi literature and it re- it was life changing for me so for example vinod kumar shukla uh, krishna valde ved uh, nirmal verma mohan rakesh amrita pritam kamleshwar manto one of my favorite writers so when i read their uh, 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 short stories and their novels it suddenly you know i i i could feel uh, uh the, the need to tell these stories became very very uh, strong in me and i wanted to uh, i wanted to uh, find a tool to do that so i was drawn um, i knew i wanted to do something with films i also remember that as a kid on doordarshan i remember watching fti diplomas so uh, i still very vividly remember the uh, sign of fti which is like a f Uh, the letter uh, f which is spelled in hindi and um, i uh, i remember those uh, 20 22 minute diploma films which used to really intrigue me and that's where the seed somewhere uh, you know to, uh, got planted in my head that this seems like the place where i could find my answers and i want to go there when i finished my uh, uh, graduation which was in mass communication uh, i applied for ft and i was really lucky that i got through and uh, when i was doing mass communication that's when i realized that uh, i mean i i i wanted to do cinematography till then it was i didn't know that i i was fascinated by taking pictures i was fascinated by reading a little bit of writing but i i really wasn't sure what was my way of saying this so in my mass communication course when i picked up the still camera and i shot on a film roll for the first time I realized that I was able to tell, express what I wanted to, and I was good at it. So, uh, so camera was my calling, and that's when I realized it. And hence, I applied to FTI for uh, a cinematography diploma. So yes, so by the time I had uh, finished schooling and I was studying uh, into mass communication, I was also uh, interning with a newspaper called the Statesman. uh um, and because films were something which really spoke to me and i was an avid watcher um i i was given this uh, task of uh, writing film reviews and uh, i found myself really interested it also gave me the opportunity 
to watch a lot of international cinema which was uh, which was very important for me so uh, i was watching russian films and i was watching swedish films and so before coming to fti i, I was lucky that uh, i was i was all i'd already seen tarkovsky and i was blown away by stoker i'd already seen breathless and it was uh, it it was it had changed the way i uh, thought films could be made so i uh, so basically when i saw stalker um, and breathless um, it it just became very clear to me that i want to go ahead and do this it was a very important moment it, it may sound very dramatic but that's how it was for me so um, hence i applied to fti and uh, um, fti is a place which gave me uh, 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 the space to uh understand cinematography the the theory of it the aesthetic of it so once i graduated from fti i uh, called mr gurun pradhan to assist him and um, uh, i was lucky i got that opportunity um, i had uh, looked up to his work ever since um, i'd seen parinda kari 1942 a love story devdas and a lot of other films um and that experience was really interesting for me uh, uh, to be able to watch uh, such a master uh, more light play with light uh, um the discipline is something that he instilled in me and i carry it forward with my assistants i think it's very important um uh, a lot of things uh, uh, precision um, how to uh, how he lights up it's amazing just to watch him light up you know you 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 think that he's putting a light and uh, you keep uh, you 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 keep lighting up the whole set and then slowly 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 he'll start changing everything because he's he's creating a design in his head and it's very interesting to see him light it's um, the way he uh, uh, he his uh, storyteller first and uh, 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 cinematographer who believes in beautiful images uh, i also love the fact that he at he re reinvents himself with every film so how rangde basanti looked uh, and how dilicha looked was completely different so that kind of uh, energy was amazing and it was really inspiring so i'm uh, i'm really glad and really grateful that i got to uh, see uh, such a master at work also at the same time my diploma film kramasha it got selected at the prestigious budapest master class um it's a very uh, prestigious thing for student dps uh, uh they select about 14 students from around the world and uh, you get to spend 15 days uh, with uh, wilmosh sigmund and another master in hungary and you get to know of the latest happening in the technology you get to shoot in a setup which is uh, uh, very different and interesting for us and i also had the opportunity to meet about 40 student dps from around the world so that was a really really interesting experience and i also uh, came back feeling extremely proud about the fact that i went to fti and um, how institute gave us so much uh, in terms of uh, technique camera lights freedom um, 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 even uh, the way uh, how we express in telling a story and uh, the kind of space and nurturing we get uh, so i was really grateful for that experience and after that uh, someone told me um, that a um, uh, uh, very prominent director was looking for a dp and people were sending in their dvds i sent my diploma film and um, uh, and so that's how i uh, uh, backed this film called fook which was my first film uh with the uh, uh, mr ram gopal verma it was also a very interesting film uh, as a first film to uh, do because uh, uh, horror is a genre where you know um, you can create mood you can play with shadow and light and you can interestingly lens and that's something that we all look forward to so um that was my first feature and uh, it it was received well uh, i was uh, very ha- i was very glad that Uh, uh a lot of people in the uh, fraternity liked it um and uh, the fact that i was shooting my first film exactly uh, say 4 5 6 months after i graduated from fti was also a very interesting thing um so uh, i i i could not assess longer 
and this is something which i feel you know if one has the opportunity to one must definitely do it but at the same time if you have the independent work going for you uh, uh, it's difficult to say no to so i was making my own mistakes i was learning from my own mistakes on my own shoot and my journey you know with every passing day i was figuring out how to how to run a set and how to light up effectively and how to uh, break it down how to smartly plan a shoot um, uh, so that you can smoothly function and and at the same time deliver a good uh, uh, scene or a good shot so these are things which every film taught me so the most important factor to choose a script that's a very interesting question um so out of all the scripts one uh, that one gets offered you try and find the best one that is the most basic answer apart from that i always uh, like to uh, look at a script uh, with the intention what is the intention of uh, the story what is what is it trying to insinuate what is the politics behind it do i agree with it do i don't agree with it it's 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 something which makes a lot of difference to me um and uh, a script which is well written is a, a story which is uh, inspiring motivating um, uh, i try and find scripts i try and look for scripts in fact i would say i would reframe it i seek scripts where uh, you're uh, saying something beyond uh, where you're trying to experiment with the form where there are silences where there is a, where there is a more than a conversation and you're trying to get in, uh, deeper into the skin of your characters or or uh, um, a well written uh, screenplay is something very uh, rare to come by um it does help if you know your basics if you know your theory if you know the reason why a camera behaves a certain way if you know why a light why you choosing a particular light what is the quality texture what is the mood you're trying to create um uh, so the whole uh, uh, theory behind it is very important yet at the same time i believe that you know uh, i'm somebody of the opinion that uh, it's important that you learn everything and then when you're shooting you must deal on everything and that's that's where the intuition kicks in so when you're uh, when you're reading a script when you're interacting with your uh, director uh, when you're uh, prepping for a film that's the time uh, i like to soak everything in i like to uh, uh, understand the script read it many a times make my notes i try to absorb uh, what the director is trying to tell me Uh, about how he or she wants to say the story because the same story could be could be said in a million ways there could be a million interpretations there could be a million ways of breaking down the same scene into different shots so uh, so during that process i try and uh, listen to everything at the same time i try and find my own technical variations that in this film i'm going to treat it uh, more soft sources here it's a grungy film and i want to create a sense of uh, reality i'd keep the sources harsh so uh, you you make these uh, you come up with these ideas but i believe when i finally uh, go on the set and i start shooting i go with my intuition because i've taken all of this information in i've processed it and now what i'm going to do would be a function of all of it put together and uh, the way i would look at it which would be very intuitive and i would just say that i feel that this shot should be taken at this level and uh, uh, it might sound intuitive but then there's a whole uh, you know there's a whole uh, preparation behind it so that's how i like to approach cinematography the last film that i shot uh, is called ventilator uh, it's a marathi film it's a black satirical family drama uh, uh, centered around a huge maharashtrian family set in a konkan village uh coming from a konkan village so it's basically around uh, uh this one head of the family who uh, goes on the ventilator who's in the icu and during the ganpati days and how the whole family comes together and the whole uh, you know the drama that unfolds so it's uh, it's a very universal sort of a story and it was very interesting for me to deal with 
because uh, I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to do a purely people's film where it was about people and emotion and families and um, so it was very interesting to frame say for example I was framing in one shot I was trying to uh, make a composition of eight men or six men or eight men uh, and four women and you know they all uh, are very important in the way they position and how, how do you break down a scene when if a scene is happening between say uh, uh, 20 odd family members and it's a very uh, verbose scene and there's continuous cacophony and people are fighting over small things to be able to break it down and to be able to capture it keeping the essence of each interpersonal emotion and relationship alive so it was a really interesting exercise for me I also enjoyed working with uh, Rajesh Mahapuskar, the director. His uh, uh, hold on the emotion and the way he wants to tell his story is commendable and it also gave me a lot of clarity on how to go about it. So, uh, and uh, the film was received very well uh, by the audiences, by the critics and um, we, we were lucky that it also did well at the box office. What I'm trying to say is uh, that inspiration is no, uh, it's not one moment, it's not one, uh, it's not one person, it's not one film, it's not one book. It's a collective collage of experiences, memories, uh, images, sounds, uh, places I, I've seen, uh, people I've known. Um, uh, throughout my life, uh, throughout the growing up years of my life, so inspiration is like it's it's happening all the time inspiration i'm i'm getting my inspiration for, from something i'm seeing right now to it could be nestled in a long lost memory when i was a kid so i'm you know i continuously look back at my experiences collective experiences to remember uh, or to feel or to uh, transport myself into a particular scene or space and i try and der derive the color, the spaces, the, the way the lighting should feel or look. Currently working on a couple of commercials, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm getting to do some interesting work on those. Um, um, and apart from that, one thing that I'm really excited about right now is a, is a initiative that a lot of female VPs uh, of India ha have put together. It's called Indian Women Cinematographers Combined, and uh, basically, it's a it's a group, uh, a peer group of all women DPs, and right now we have about sixty plus. So, um, so we've all come together under one roof. I think it's it's a great initiative, and uh, it's gonna uh, help. It's it, it is gonna help us shine a light on the brilliant work that all the women DPs have been doing. It, it, it is going to be a celebration to the collective presence of all uh, female cinematographers. So my favorite work of my own, um, uh, there are two films uh, which I would like because, uh, because of the kind of time, passion, energy and love I put into those two films. One is my student diploma film. Uh, it's called Kramasha, which means to be continued. Um, it was a film which I shot for my final year FTI project. It's special in many ways because uh, a, uh, I got um, I was working with one of my favorite directors, Amit Atta. I really like his work, the way he tells his stories. I really relate to it. And uh, Kramasha was an experience where uh, uh, we were able to uh, mix our worlds together and uh, create a way of uh, storytelling which was very unique and peculiar uh, and that film uh, uh, it's a film uh, which uh, was very well received in the festivals uh, um, it, it's, it's also it's also special for me because I got my national award for best cinematography for Kramasha so it will always remain close to my heart and uh, my second favorite uh, personal favorite is uh, a film called Hawaii Zada um, it, it's a um, 1895 uh, epic story of a man who was based in Mumbai, it's a real story, who dreamt of making a plane. So uh, that was uh, another 
a joy ride for me because uh, me and the director of the we went all out uh, and uh, tried to make this fantastical uh, childlike dream uh, um, um, come true because uh, for us the man who was making the plane was also like a child so it's uh, it's fable like it's fairy tale ish it's uh, theatrical it's uh, colorful it's dramatic it's got a lot of contrast and a lot of uh, beams and shafts and it it was it's it was a very different experience of executing hawaii zada and i'm i'm so glad that i got to shoot it on 35 mm um uh, and because now i don't think it's kind of possible but uh, i remember we were like one of the last people in uh, mumbai who were shooting on kodak and uh, i had to shift my cans from reliance lab when it shut down to kodak lab and eventually kodak lab uh, kind of processed my last can and and the lab was shut so uh, that film went through a lot of uh, journey and uh, i'm really proud of that film i think uh, i think a lot of my effort heart and and it made me it made me a much more it taught me a lot um i grew up in that film um so it will always stay special for me so i would like to say that um, learn and de learn uh, for me that's been the mantra first learn it's important that we learn and then we de learn that's very very important and then just go out and do it so the um, i i recently watched a documentary very interestingly uh, made it's called uh, placebo uh, it's available on the netflix it's about um, uh, the students at uh, uh, aims medical institutes and what goes on uh, with their lives it's a very poignant very strong and powerful film and uh, i think everybody should watch it uh one of my feature films uh, uh the payment uh, for my assistance in focus puller was just not getting uh, released and i got in touch with vika and uh, one of the best things about vika is that uh, they are a phone call away and uh, vika stepped in and uh, uh, they spoke to the producers and uh, in no time the issue was solved so and apart from that uh, i'm really uh, um grateful to the fact that uh, we have a body which is there to protect our interests our rights it also uh, keeps doing a lot of these technical events uh and i keep looking forward to more vika events uh and uh, i've recently taken this vow that i'm going to be more